In today's video, I'm gonna give you what I think are the three best bench press assistance exercises for lanky arm folks like myself. So if you're not built to bench press, this video is gonna be for you. But even if you are actually a little bit more geared towards benching and you have shorter arms and it comes a little bit more naturally, you can actually apply everything I'm recommending in today's video with success to your own training. And I think it would actually serve you well to hear the different theory and knowledge I'm providing in the video from the lens of someone who has longer arms because not only am I going to be recommending three different exercises, I'm also going to be covering the programming dynamics of how I would implement these exercises into a training routine from the lens of someone who has long arms. And I'm also going to be explaining the biomechanical profiles of how these exercises help out someone who has lanky arms. Now real quick, I want to define lanky arms. Whenever we discuss biomechanics, we have to relate it subjectively to the individual rather than objectively to some standard we create in our mind. So whether you're six feet tall like myself or even taller, or whether you're even five feet tall and very short, you can still have long arms in relation to your torso. So do understand you can be short and lanky. It's not so much a matter of height. It's more a matter of the length of your limbs in relation to your torso, which is really what's going to affect you when it comes to the biomechanics of the bench press and the other big three exercises. So real quick, before we even dive into the video, you might notice the unity sign behind me. My current area for filming prime strength is out of commission today. So I figured I would come in here and give you guys a little foreshadowing of what's to come for unity because so many of you have been asking anyway what unity is about. So if you're not interested in this, go ahead and fast forward using the timestamps to the next section. But for those of you who have been asking, unity is the world's first holistic coaching company. Now, the word holistic gets thrown around a lot and there's a lot of people who claim to be holistic coaches, but to me, there's really three main areas we're gonna be developing. That's biology, psychology, and environment. And I think of these three aspects as one unified whole. So they're all just three different areas of one thing, which is the human. And I've never seen a coaching company successfully coach these three areas, and I wanted to actually provide a solution for this. So when I say coaching psychology, I'm actually currently designing a one-year course with some of the world's best psychologists and cognitive scientists. I'm in talks with multiple experts in this field, as well as using all the knowledge I've learned over the years, reading endless amounts here, and we're putting together together a one year course for developing psychological practices. This is going to be meditations, contemplations, a whole knowledge base that you're going to be injected with over the course of a year, but in very easy to understand ways that will literally grow your mind. And I mean that literally your brain matter is going to grow. This has been shown in empirical evidence. We're also going to be coaching biology, your physical fitness in very amazing ways, coaching the individual and the environment comes down to internal and external environments, which you could loosely look at as lifestyle. So I'm very excited for more of this to come out. Stay tuned for more information, but I want to just give you guys a little foreshadow in this video. Now, exercise number one for long arm lifters in the bench press that I would recommend is going to be the very close grip Larson press. So let's break that down. When I say very close grip, I'm going to be referring one half thumb length from the start of your knurling. So it's gonna be very close grip, especially if you guys are using a max grip with for your legal you know, bench press competitions. So when you line up on the bar, find the start of the knurling, extend your thumb out and put the middle of your thumb where the crease is at that line and then close your hands. And that's gonna be your grip width. For most people, it's gonna barely be about shoulder width with your arms almost dead forward in front of you. This is gonna provide two things. So the first area this is gonna help on lanky arm people is you're gonna find your elbows are dramatically outside of the range of your hands. So you don't have stacked joints anymore. So most people when they bench press for the majority of the range of motion, if you're using at least pinky on the ring, which most competitive power lifters slash anyone concerned with strength is gonna be at minimum pinkies touching the ring, you're gonna be stacked throughout the majority of the exercise. Now, the wider you go, the more you actually get an advantage in the triceps towards lockout, which is why generally you don't see too many wide grip benchers failing at lockout unless they just weren't strong enough in general. But you can see closer grip benchers 
usually fail at lockout. This is because the more you displace the hands inward, the more the elbow, really the tricep and elbow joints are gonna be at such a disadvantage to pass through that sticking point in that mid to top lockout portion of the range of motion. So what we're really doing actually with long arm lifters is we're taking what their natural weak point is anyway, because this is something all linking arm lifters deal with in the bench press and worsening it times 10. <laughs> and what you're gonna find when you perform this exercise, especially in a Larson press way, the range of motion is even greater than usual and you're at such a disadvantage due to the grip width that it trains your mid range sticking point into the lockout to such a degree that you overcome that. The second thing this really does is because it's a Larson press, the amount of active scapula stability you have to have to properly coordinate this is really, really high. Now here's the thing, you can do this incredibly wrong. I actually have whole videos covering just active scap retraction and protraction in Larson pressing and the bench press for group coaching members. But in short, all you have to understand is that when you bench, you want to actually actively retract the whole way down. It's not something where you just kind of pin your shoulder blades back and then forget about them. When people do that, they come loose. This is not a strong bench press position. You should be actively retracting on the way down. And there should actually, in my opinion, be slight protraction, just a little bit, on the way out of the press. This is gonna train your triceps actually to an even higher degree, and it's gonna give you more power and stability, both in your comp bench as well as in your Larson pressing. Now, obviously, whenever you're doing a really heavy comp bench, you're not gonna protract quite as much, but you should still protract a little bit. I don't believe in fully isolating your scaps into the end range of retraction when pressing. I think that's an old powerlifting myth that should go away. This exercise is gonna help complement that scapula stability and that tricep strength and give you more power into your lockout. Now real quick, how I would implement very close grip Larson pressing would be on secondary bench days for higher volumes between sets of four all the way up to 10. And I would start in that 10 range and then slowly work my way down through a training block. This is gonna ensure you do still get some strength adaptation with this exercise, but the majority of it is actually really volume based, which is gonna be extra hard due to the range of motion and the fact that it's a Larson press. You guys are gonna really die out, but you're gonna put on a huge amount of muscle doing this exercise like this, and it's gonna be much more effective. So this is not something you wanna do on a primary day very heavy, it's more for volume on a secondary day. Now, exercise number two is gonna be the dumbbell bench press, one of the most straightforward, but there's two reasons. One, you're gonna gain a ton of stability from this exercise if you program it heavy. We're gonna to get to programming in a second. It needs to be done very heavy. Like I'm talking sets of like three to seven, although you can do it for some reps too. The second thing it does though, is it really isolates your pecs, which is the total opposite of what I just recommended for the last one. But what you have to understand is that whenever you do barbell pressing as a long arm lifter, you're always gonna have your elbow joint almost unanimously be your weakest link. We want to also make sure we can have some kind of pressing that is heavier that isolates the pecs. Because you're unilaterally training your arms like this, it's not on a bilateral fixed motion like the bench press, what's going to happen is your pecs are now the weakest link, it's not your triceps. This gets into really difficult to understand and explain territories of what's called lateral force transfer. I actually have videos on that, but just trust me when I say dumbbell benching is more for the pecs and way less for the triceps. Now what you wanna understand is when programming this exercise, you usually wanna do it on a secondary or tertiary bench press day, or you can do it after your main bench press work, but you usually wanna actually get down into some heavier rep ranges. So it's okay to do this for some volume early on, but getting this as low as like three rep maxes, I'm not kidding, can be hugely beneficial. This will teach you stability that you can't really learn anywhere else. When you go to lay back with some 150, 160 pound dumbbells and you're trying to rep those with good pauses on the chest, 
This exercise is gonna build up the stability so much that when you lay down to do your regular bench press, it's gonna feel super easy no matter how long your arms are. Now, real quick announcement before the third exercise, I am for the first time in my coaching career offering customized programs that I individualize for people who don't wanna pay for my one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is actually the first time I've ever offered this because I really don't believe in commodified coaching. However, I created a system to make this much more hands-on than just telling someone to fill out a questionnaire and then I you know, create a 16 week program for them. So if you're interested in this, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, or if you're interested in our team or group coaching, we have options for everyone. I'm really trying to be scalable this year and offer you guys what fits all financial situations and all the different things people might be looking for in coaching. Sign up for a free meeting to discuss this with me directly one-on-one. -on -one. I'm even gonna text you once you sign up for this meeting. If you're serious about getting some kind of programming or coaching, use the description box down below and I look forward to chatting some more. Now the third exercise is going to be incline bench with a moderate grip, minimum pinky on the rings and you can even go closer in from there. The reason I like this exercise because I can hear the eyes rolling in the USAPL crowd. I can hear the sound of their eyeballs rolling up into their head. Incline benching works. I used to think it didn't. I worked with a coach who made me incline bench. My bench got really strong that cycle. And I was blown away because I could feel it working. There's three things happening. One, your lockout strength is gonna go through the roof. It makes you super explosive. Second thing it does is you can actually actively move your scapula even more than you can in a Larson press to teach you to power through your lockouts. And it really provides this active range of motion that's very different than your normal monotonous competition style bench press. Now this won't have specific carryover, but what it does is it strengthens all the weak points that get kind of created from doing the same monotony of benching and benching and benching over and over again. The third thing it does is it trains your pec minor as well as your triceps to a higher degree, one partially due to the angle, but two, due to the fact that your scapulas can move from like a free range a lot more. And you're just gonna find this has so many complementary effects on your external ro rotation of your shoulders. This is actually why so many people find incline bench to be very comfortable because you're naturally more externally rotated in the bottom position. Two, it's gonna save your joints a ton so you can get in some good pressing volume without beating your joints up as much. It's way healthier on the joints than flat benching. And then three, you're just gonna get some power in your lockout. I promise you, your lockout's gonna go through the roof. That's the name of the game for long arm people. How do we get through the sticking point? That's where we get stuck. Those people with huge arches and short little arms and they got a four inch range of motion, that's you know amazing for them. For everyone else, we're gonna have to actually use a lot of force and muscle to get through that sticking point. Incline bench is gonna train that. Now, I recommend this always on a tertiary day, almost unanimously, or somewhere later in the program after a secondary day. So this is gonna be kind of like a primary exercise on like the third benching day of the week. And I really like this for people who get beat up doing a lot of flat benching. So that way we can increase frequency without beating up their joints. Incline bench is one of my favorite go-to exercises. I use it literally for all my clients, not even just long arm people. It gets no love. Now here's the trick, 30 degree incline height. That's a video, we're gonna make it short. We're ending there. If you guys have any questions, any thoughts, any concerns, leave it down in the comment section. If you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, sign up. If you guys are excited about Unity, let me know because honestly, Unity is gonna be like my magnum opus. It's like the thing I'm most excited about. I promise you I'm gonna keep prime strength going because I love to power lift, I love bodybuilding, and it's a passion of mine, and I'll be integrating a lot of that into Unity, but Unity is the thing I'm most passionate about, and I can't wait to show you guys what I'm designing because I've been spending hours and hours and hours and spending so much money on this project. It's ridiculous, but I literally want to change the world with it. And I'm not kidding when I say that. I really think it's going to change the world. I think it's going to be the start of a new culture that changes the foundations of so much in so many ways. And I'm excited for that. Catch you guys in the next video.